Good morning. We do give everyone a very warm welcome to our service this morning. For those of us that are joining us online and for those that are joining us inside the hall. We're just going to start with a word of prayer. Shall we just pray together? Father, we ever thank thee and bless thee that we're able for a short while just to be able to open the word, the Bible, that we're able to just simply speak from it and speak concerning the Lord Jesus Christ and him being the only saviour of sinners. We do just pray, Father, for help to be given as we seek to just simply uplift him and him alone. Father, we ever give thee the utmost thanks in his precious and worthy name. Amen. If you have a Bible, please, could we turn to the book of John? The book of John. Now, there's a few readings this morning, so please just bear with me. I will try to read carefully to us. We're just going to break in at chapter 19 and looking from verse 17 so Matthew Mark Luke John are the Gospels in the New Testament John chapter 19 reading from verse 17 to start off with please and this is what it would say to us And he, this is the Lord Jesus, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. Go to verse 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, <coughs> saith I first. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. The Jews therefore, because it was preparation, that body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first, and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was dead already, and they brake not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And that he saw it, and that he saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture saith, They shall look on him. Whom they pierced. <clears throat> After this, Joseph of <coughs> Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate <coughs> gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at first came to Jesus by night. And brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took there the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, <coughs> and in the garden a new sepulchre, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus therefore because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. Going on to chapter 20. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, 
and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other <laughs> disciple whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he, stooping down and looking in, <coughs> saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. <coughs> then come of Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and see if the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. The disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was <coughs> Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him thence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she'd seen the Lord and that he'd spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We've seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my <laughs> hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were with him, were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, Thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that believing you may have life through his name. Now we know that God will bless the reading of his precious word to us. I know that was quite long this morning, but 
it's so difficult to leave anything out. When we think of the Lord Jesus Christ, we think of that one who was that willing sacrifice. That one who was willing to come into this world of ours and to die. And we find here, and we could have read earlier on, where Pilate, where he was, and he was shown the Lord Jesus Christ, and of how he could say, I find no fault in this man. Oh, do you know something? There was no fault in him. There was no fault in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why he could come into this world of ours and die for the sins of the world. That is why, dear friend, none of us here, none of us that live on this earth can save each other. Because we all have sin. And the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Meaning, we cannot reach God's standard. We can do good. We can help one another, we can be kind, we can be just, we can read our Bibles, we can pray, we can do all these different things. All things that are really good and things that we are taught from a young age to be polite and to do the right thing. But these things will never save us because our good and how we look upon ourselves and how other people look upon us it doesn't matter what matters is God looking upon us sees us all the same that we are guilty in his sight but the wonderful message of God's salvation is this even though we are guilty in his sight he has provided a way of salvation <coughs> because the God of heaven loves all he hates sin he can have nothing to do with sin. Excuse me. <clears throat> he can have nothing to do with sin. But he loves the sin. And he loves you and he loves me. And we've read here of the Lord Jesus Christ being crucified on Calvary's cross. <coughs> And we read of how he said those wonderful words. It is finished. In verse 30 of chapter 19. It is finished. Now that wasn't dear friend that his life was over. But it was that the work he came to do was complete. It was finished. What he came to do was complete. He's finished the work. What does that mean? It means everything has been completed that we can know our sins forgiven. Everything has been made right through the Lord Jesus Christ. And with our simple faith and trust and belief in the Lord Jesus, <coughs> we can be saved. And do you know what the wonderful thing is? The offer of salvation. God's offer to you and me. It doesn't rely on us. It doesn't rely on what we can do. It doesn't rely on what we can give. It relies on what he has done. It relies upon what he has finished, what he has completed. It's all to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. We do not come to preach ourselves, but Christ crucified. And that's what it says on our board here. We preach Christ crucified. Why? Because there is no other way of salvation. Oh, he's a wonderful saviour. He wants to be your saviour. But is he? Oh, that's an important question. Is he your saviour? Has there come a time in your life when you've realised your sin is leading you away from God? And you simply repent and turn to him? And you know what the wonderful thing is? He will never turn anyone away. He will never say to anyone, you're not good enough. 
He will never say to anyone, no, I'm not accepting you. Because you know what the wonderful thing of this message of the Bible is? For all who come to him will be saved. Fact, will be saved. That is the wonder of God's message of salvation. It is for all. But not all will accept him. Not all will turn to him. Not all will accept him as saviour. Oh, there were those there who saw him at the cross at Calvary. And they would cry, come down, save yourself and us. Do you know something, dear friend? The Lord Jesus Christ could have come down from that cross. He had the power to do that. But there was no way at all that the Lord Jesus Christ was ever going to come down from that cross. Why? Because he must die. He must die so that we could be saved. Oh dear friend, he didn't only have to die, but he was buried. He didn't only have to be buried, but he had to rise again from the dead. And many people today on <coughs> Easter Sunday will think of the Lord Jesus Christ rising from the dead. And what did we read in chapter 20? We read... Mary Magdalene and other ones of them, they came early in the morning and they came to where he was buried and they came there and they came running to Peter because they knew that his body wasn't there and they said, where is our Lord? Where is he? And at this point they didn't realise and they weren't understanding that the Lord Jesus Christ was going to rise again. And we read that in our Bible. The disciples, they were told by the Lord Jesus that he wouldn't always be with them. They were told that he was going to die. But these things weren't always brought to their understanding. <coughs> <coughs> but what do we find? They looked in. And what was there? The linen clothes. Why were they there? Why were the linen clothes lying there? I'll tell you why they were lying there, dear friend, because they weren't needed any longer. Because the Lord Jesus Christ wasn't dead, but the Lord Jesus Christ was alive. And they were wrapped together. But then we read here, don't we, of Mary. Oh, she wept. She wondered where her Lord and Saviour was. She wanted to see him. She wanted to be with him. And what do we read? Verse 15. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Who are you looking for? <coughs> She supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Verse 16, read that carefully. Verse 16, this is what it says. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. Why is that important? Oh, he knew her by name. The Lord Jesus Christ knows us. He knows everything about us. And he called her by name. Or can we think of other people in the Bible that the Lord Jesus Christ named them by name? Zacchaeus is one that comes straight to mind. He knew him by name. He knows each and every one of us. He knows where we stand before him. Oh, she loved him, but he loved her. He saith unto her, Mary... She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is the same master. She heard his voice. She knew his voice. Why did she know his voice? Because she trusted in him. Jesus said, Well, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. Go and tell the others. And, he, and she goes and she tells the others and she says to them, I have seen the Lord. But where are the other disciples? They at evening.
being the first that with the doors shut, was, were assembled together for fear of the Jews. And Jesus came and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Oh, they were frightened. They were scared. They were worried. They did not know what was going to happen. The one that they put their trust in had, had seen die. He'd been put into that tomb. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Listen to this carefully. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Oh, they rejoiced. The one that they'd seen die on that cross at Calvary, the one that they'd seen put into that tomb, he was alive. And they rejoiced and were glad because they saw the Lord. Oh, dear friend, for when we come to know the Lord Jesus as our Saviour, it is a wonderful thing. Our eyes are open to the wonder and glory of Him. To know our sins forgiven. To rejoice in knowing that He is our Lord and Saviour. But there was someone missing, wasn't there? And we're not here to give Thomas a, a bad time. But because he wasn't there, he missed out. He missed out. But we see here, Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. Oh, that must have been a wonderful thing for them to say to him. We've seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see his hands, unless I shall see the nail prints in his hands, and put my finger into the print, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Oh dear friends, some people, they will say, Unless I see, I will not believe. Oh, I must see. Well, what happens? After eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger. And behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Thomas said unto him, Lord, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Oh dear friend, to believe on him. Oh we may not have seen him with these physical eyes of ours. But we've seen him with the eyes of faith. And he doesn't disappoint. And there are many here. And there are many in this world of ours that can say that they put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they've come in different ways. They have come. And they have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour. And he doesn't disappoint. Blessed are those that have not seen and yet have believed. And what do we see at the last verse? In verse 31. But these are written... That ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Oh dear friend, it's all through the Lord Jesus. He's done it all. He's paid the price. He died on Calvary's cross. He shed his precious blood. He was buried. That third day he rose victorious from the dead. And he's alive and alive forevermore. He's a risen saviour. But is he your saviour? He wants to be. He can be. He will be. But we have to turn to him. 
Oh, and you know something? All that turn to him, he will not turn you away. That is a wonderful thing. He doesn't say, you're not good enough. No. He wants all to come. And all that come to him, he will receive. So, dear friend, what is the more for us to do? Nothing. Because that is what we read in verse 30 of chapter 19. The Lord Jesus said, it is finished. Complete. The work has been done that we can know our sins forgiven. The Lord Jesus Christ has died. The Lord Jesus Christ has been buried. The Lord Jesus Christ has rose victorious from the dead. And because of that, we can have hope. We can have assurance. We can have joy. We can have peace with God. <coughs> oh, is this not a wonderful saviour? Is this not a wonderful message? That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I know I'm shouting, and I do it often, and I'm sorry. But how can you not shout out? He's alive, and alive forevermore. He's risen. Oh, dear friend, we have a wonderful Savior. If we cannot shout out and be joyful in the fact that we have a Savior who loves us, one who died for us, one who was buried, one who rose victorious from the dead, one who is alive, one who is seated at the right hand side of God. And if we cannot shout that out, if we cannot give praise and glory to God, the wonderful Savior of sinners, well, many people want to shout many things. What a wonderful saviour he is. Do you know something? He loves you. He wants you to be his. He wants you to come to know him. He's done it all. But we have to come to him. We're not robots, dear friend. We're not robots. We have our own minds. We know what we think. But we have to simply come to him. The Lord Jesus will not force himself on any. He will not force himself on any. But all that come to him and trust upon him will be saved. Shall we just pray? Father, we just ever thank thee and bless thee for this morning. We thank thee, Father, for a risen Saviour. Oh, Father, we thank thee for one who is alive and alive forevermore. One who is no longer on a cross. One who is no longer in a tomb. One who is alive. One who is coming again to receive those to be with him. And oh, Father, we thank thee that we can rejoice in a risen Saviour. We can, joy, we can rejoice in a Saviour who has died. One who has paid that price of sin. One, our Father, who has shown that great love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, Father, we do just pray for one another. We pray for this town of Hartlepool. We pray, oh, our Father, for those that would not necessarily see the need to pray for themselves. And, oh, our Father, our prayer would be that men, women, and boys and girls would simply trust in the Lord Jesus Christ while there is yet still time. Oh, Father, we thank thee again for the Saviour. Oh, what a wonderful Saviour he is. But how more wonderful it would be for people to be able to say the truth. He is my Saviour. So, Father, we do just pray for safety as we go our separate ways now and ever give thee the utmost thanks in his precious and worthy name. Amen.